Okay, and we're back. What number moment will I get today? A six! Ooh. <gasps> we're going to the library! I love the library. This is a great day. Every year, the Sunset Bird Memorial Library held a summer reading program. Your moms and Lizzie were big fans of it. Mom and Mommy because it encouraged reading, and Lizzie because she could win prizes. When it came to what you thought of having to read a bunch of books and then going to the library with a competitive Lizzie... I mean, the competitive Lizzie I could do without, but I love my books. Each time it had been one of the highlights of your summer, and you'd never been shy about letting your parents know that. You and Lizzie went with Shiloh before, and this year you'd brought Cove too. His dad had been so over the moon about Cove being included that he'd driven all four of you. You had never been in Cove's dad's car before. It seemed a lot shinier than your mom's. Thank you, Cove. I mean, not, not Cove. Cove's dad. Thank you, Cove's dad. <laughs> After hurting the group inside, Mr. Holden gave you all a wide wave with the arm that has a stingray on it. Have fun, kids! Stay inside of the librarians, you hear? I wish I could watch you in action, but your poor old dad has to finish up some work. I got it. Though, I'm sure that won't get in the way. Heck, I'd probably hold you kids back. There's pointedly no reply from his son over what was likely meant as only a joke. Cove's dad seems to deflate a bit. I'll swing around again when the shindig ends. Yeah, you can go home now. Aww. You don't have to throw me out the door. I... Your sister, already in full competition mode, cut him off. For once, Cove looked grateful she was there. Come on! We have to go find a table, Mr. Holden. You can talk to Cove after when we win. Okay, okay. See you in about an hour. Have fun. Did I say that already? My advanced age is really catching up to me now. Bye. Bye, son. The four of you watched him shuffle out of the library, glancing over his shoulder at Cove more than once. He's just trying so hard. Also, hello, Sh Shiloh again. Bye. Bye, Mr. Holden. Thank you for bringing us. Thanks, Lizzie. I don't know what you're thanking me for. Are you copying Shiloh? Distracted, Cove was already glancing around the gigantic library. Hmm. I want to go explore. What? I said I want to go look around and see what's in here. But... But the quiz starts soon! That's why we came! Wide at the first signs of conflict, Shiloh's eyes darted between Lizzie and Cove. Then you can do it without me, right? You don't need a bunch of people. Didn't your dad say to stay with the librarians? You shouldn't go somewhere by yourself. Cove leveled an unimpressed stare at the both of them. Then his eyes met yours. I'm totally down for ditching these fools. <laughs> Don't you worry, Cove. Hey! Why are you looking at her? Molly is with us. Molly can come if she wants to. Cove's idea is more fun. I'll stick with Lizzie. I'd rather go exploring. The quiz sounds better. Go over to Cove, stay next to Lizzie. I mean, I like prizes and stuff, but exploring a library just sounds way more fun. <laughs> yep, yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna, gonna go with the top one. Cove's idea is more fun. Seriously? Cove looked surprised, but happy at the same time. You talked about how much you enjoyed this on the ride over, so he probably hadn't been expecting you to side with him. Ugh, fine. Let's go, Shiloh. Uh, okay. Her arms folded, your sister stormed off. Shiloh had to race to keep up with her. Mm. She cares a lot about that. Yeah, Lizzie gets really competitive. I can tell. Since you've been here a lot before, we could play hide-and-seek. Hide-and-seek? Not exploring? 
Yep. If I'm searching for you, and you're searching for me, we'll really have to look at everything. You weren't entirely sure of how effective that would be, but couldn't say he was totally wrong. <laughs> I'll hide first. Decision made, Cove took off toward the back of the library. I guess as long as you guys are playing quietly in the library. You had already agreed to play with him instead, so you covered your face and waited for 10 seconds. When you looked up again, he was nowhere to be seen. He glanced over toward the way he went. Cove hadn't had much time to hide, but he was already invisible. The place you decided to check was... Hmm... Peter Pan, Fairy Tale, or Solar System. Hmm. Let's go Peter Pan. The library had lots of little hidey holes all over the place along the walls. Your mom called them alcoves. Every single one had its own cool, shiny book poster next to it. This one had Peter Pan and a young girl flying through the sky, two younger kids trailing behind them. It was captioned, Wendy Darling's First Flight, in big, bold letters. Huh, that must be Wendy. But this wasn't where Cove was. At least not originally. Cove poked his head out of a tiny little seating area. <laughs> He's like, yes, you're correct. Yeah, with her brothers Michael and John. Even having assumed that he was in there, you still jumped a little bit, which made Cove grin. I came out, but I guess it's still over. Okay. Your turn now. I'm gonna cover my eyes and count to ten. I promise I won't peek. While Cove had his eyes securely behind the palms of his hands, you went to go hide. I love this. I played so much hide and seek as a kid. This is great. Fire awareness station, stuffed animals, giant piece of fruit, outlaw poster, fantasy section, near the toddler books. Nah, I'm not going toddler. Fire awareness sounds boring. Um, I think you need either fantasy or stuffed animals. Let's go to the fantasy section. You decided to hide from Cove in the fantasy section. He never really mentioned being interested in fantasy, so you had pretty good odds of hiding for a while there. If he didn't pay attention to it, or read it much, he might just glance over it. And you were right, sort of. He left you waiting for a while, long enough that you eventually pushed yourself to your feet to stretch your legs. You won the round, but Cove wasn't even trying. Over the edge of a shelf, you saw him standing and staring at a bunch of books. Hey, you almost found me. Cove's shoulders tensed in alarm. Ugh! Oh, sorry. I was gonna come find you soon. It's alright. What's, um... You gestured at the shelf full of books and the one in his hand that had clearly been taking up all of his attention. <gasps> You're into Narnia? Stop. Excellent taste. They're the Narnia series. They have talking animals and a magic land and intense fights. And my mom used to read them with me. Aww. Aww. Oh. Her favorite one was Susan. Susan? Really? I don't hear that as a favorite character too often. Good on your mom. You weren't sure what to do. You weren't sure what he would do. His mom was always a sensitive topic. But he tucked the book back on the shelf and that was all. It was nice the memories made him happy instead of sad this time. All right. It's my turn again. Start counting so I can go pick a spot. Okay. Cove darted off before you even had a chance to fully close your eyes. One Mississippi. When the time was up, he was long gone. Again. There were still a lot of good places to hide, so you figured he was... <gasps> this library has so many cool things! I want to go to the Willy Wonka statues. He must be next to all the Willy Wonka statues, you thought. And you were right! Hey, let's go! Cove was standing there looking at them. You must have missed him in the crowd at first sight. But he wasn't really hiding at all. Oh, hey. These are creepy. The statues were made of brass, Lizzie had told you once. Apparently, they were all the kids that had gone to Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. Charlie Bucket, Augustus Gloop, Veruca Salt. Ugh. 
I was gonna hide here, but they're too weird. Let's keep playing. I can still win. <sighs> he put his hands over his eyes. But before you could run off again, a librarian approached the two of you. Uh-oh. Oh, kids, I've been looking for you. Cove peeked between his fingers at the stranger. Us? You must be Cove. Your dad told me he was waiting by the entrance. Has it really been an hour? Cove blinked, mouth opening like he was going to say something, then glanced down at his pink cast. It was a pretty clear giveaway. Mm. Sure. Is my sister Lizzie with him? She's taller than us and has orange hair. You're Molly, right? You nodded. Whew. I found both of you at once. That's right, she's with him. And the little guy with freckles. Come on, let's go get you reunited so we can close up for the night. I take it the quiz didn't go so well. Ready to go home, you and Co followed him up front, where the ragtag group of family members and Shiloh were all waiting. Hey! There you are! She was pouting. You could tell from all the way across the room, and it was only that much more obvious as you got closer. Did you win? We came in second! I mean, that's pretty good. <sighs> hey, gang. I thought you'd have been with them the whole time, Cove. I'm glad you didn't just go off by yourself, at least. Cove glanced over at you, then back up at his dad. Yeah. Me too. Aww. A broad smile spread over Mr. Holden's face. That's... Even so. Next time, you should... Cove? Cove? Cove's dad glanced around, slightly frantic. But Cove, just like always, had snuck off without thinking to say anything. He's leaving! Cove's trying to be the first one to the car! With a sudden burst of speed, Lizzie darted for the exit, still in victor-to-be mode, even for something like a race to ride in the front seat. There was nothing else for the three of you to do except head after them, pretending the librarians hadn't noticed all the commotion. Though Lizzie had been victorious in claiming a window seat in the car, you could tell by her crossed arms and occasional pout that she still had not forgiven your betrayal. Huh. <sighs> we'll make it up. Covid sighed when he had to sit in the middle after Lizzie shot past him at the last second, but he cheered up some as you hopped in the back seat next to him. Did you say you came in second place? That's some good going. No. It's not. She levied another glare at you over her shoulder. Sure, sure. <laughs> Striving to improve is good too. That makes Molly the winner in your family. Oh, beep, beep, beep. facts. Someone's got to be. What? Molly kept finding me in our game. I lost. We need a rematch. Absolutely. Hide and seek with just you two? That doesn't even count as winning. Why? Why not? It's not special. There's no judges or prizes. You eyed the seat that she'd fought so hard to win. That wasn't much of a prize either. Ooh, get her. Dad. Yes? You could see Cove's dad's eyes in the rearview mirror, suddenly attentive at his son's call. We need a prize. Oh! Uh, as a matter of fact... Mr. Holden focused intently on the road ahead as though a suitable reward to please Cove might appear before him. Right. The big thing on the flyer for this was the chance to get a free pizza coupon, wasn't it? How about I call up a takeout place and we can have pizza at home for dinner? Lizzie huffed, pulling her arms closer to her chest. Is Mom even going to let you take a pizza from Mr. Holden? We'll see. I'll ask her. I'll talk to all of your moms about this. You whoop! Thank you! Thanks, Mr. Holden! Yeah, thanks, Dad. You're welcome. I do what I can. Cove is actually happy with his dad. Hooray! But you really should have stuck with the group. The quiz would have been fun. That was the plan when I dropped you off. We stayed together and didn't leave the library. I'm glad for that. I am... 
I... Well, there's a lot of trouble you can get into even if you do have a buddy along for the ride. Just be careful next time. I worry about you, and I bet Molly's parents wouldn't want her to run off unexpectedly either. Okay, son? Yeah, let's just not talk about when we ran off last time. <laughs> okay. That's my boy. Now, enough guff from your old dad. Let's decide what kind of toppings we're gonna get. Pepperoni! Sounds good. Anything else? And the conversation continued from there, with debates on what was best to put on a pizza for the rest of the drive. Mr. Holden wanted anchovies, and the other three kids in the car had to band together to explain how gross they were. The way Cove's dad laughed up in the front seat made you wonder if he was doing it on purpose. You had a fun day already, but closing it out with the promise of a free pizza after all and more time to hang out with Cove made it even sweeter. It was a shame that you hadn't been able to do the quiz, but skipping it for just one year didn't hurt. It was worth it. Heck yeah. I regret nothing! <laughs> Except that my voice cracked? <laughs> my voice regrets everything. Okay. Hmm. Ten is the next number we're gonna do. Boop go so oops that means we're going on a sleepover okay is this after we've had the pizza it's like hey while you're here for pizza let's just have a sleepover all right kids we're done with dinner come to the table your stomach grumbled right on time as if it had heard your mom's words you halted your game and looked over mom was almost done setting the table she was walking around the mahogany wood in the process of putting down cutlery. Mommy was still in the kitchen, humming under her breath as she turned off the stove and put empty pots in the sink to wash. From beside you, Lizzie stirred, uncrossing her legs and standing up. She stretched her arms above her head. Uh, finally! I'm ready to eat. Then she cast a sly glance in your direction. You recognize that look. <laughs> Last one to the table, the rotten egg! I haven't... But it was too late. Lizzie had already bolted towards the kitchen. <laughs> uh, I'd either yell or try to catch up. Ah, heck it. I have a competitive streak, too. She was all but daring you to give chase. You planted a hand against the ground to jump to your feet. For a moment you stumbled, but you righted yourself easily enough then rushed after her, though there wasn't really time to close the gap. It was a short distance to the kitchen table. Lizzie managed to get there easily enough, slapping a hand over the wood. Mom moved just before Lizzie could bump into her. With an exasperated sigh, she resumed her work. <laughs> I win again! Ooh. Because you cheated. I didn't cheat. You ran before me. Yeah, because that's how racing works. The one who starts first wins first. That isn't true. That sounds like something a rotten egg would say. Lizzie grinned, her hands on her hips, then looked over your shoulder. Cove, you can be the tiebreaker. Was that a real race that I totally won? You blinked. You hadn't noticed what he had been doing during this little event, which wasn't much. You spotted Cove still on the floor. His legs were crossed beneath him, the arm with the cast resting in his lap. He looked at the two of you with a slight frown. It felt sort of strange to see him still here so late. Tonight, Cove had come to your house for a sleepover. Your mom's and his dad had planned it a few days ago. Uh, you weren't surprised because you had asked your mom's. You were excited when your mom's told you their idea. Um, it probably wouldn't have occurred to me, honestly. I would have just been excited, like, oh, cool. My friend's coming over for a sleepover. Sick. You had considered all the games you could play and other stuff you could do with Cove for days. And you even helped Mom search the storage room for a sleeping bag and extra bedding to prepare for his visit. Cove pursed his lips at Lizzie's question, but he didn't respond. Maybe he was planning on ignoring her. Not that Lizzie would make it easy. Come on! 
Well, did I win or what? No. What? I don't think you won. How come? It's not my fault Molly's slow. Cheating's cheating, and cheaters never win. Damn, Cove is so in my corner, I love this. You always pick her side. Yeah, cause we're bu best buddies. Cove snuck a shy peek at you before answering her. I pick her, and she picks me. Aw, that is so cute. My heart. The sugar. I have so much cavities. <laughs> You're a couple of rotten eggs, then. That's enough. Nobody here is a loser or a rotten egg. You're each farm fresh. Which is a sentence I never thought I'd say. All right. Now, listen to Mom and come sit at the table for dinner. All three of you. You and Lizzie obeyed, sitting across from each other at the edge of the table. Lizzie blew a raspberry at you and Mom turned her back. Two can play that game. You stuck your tongue out right back. Mm. When Mommy pointedly cleared her throat, though, the two of you stopped. Your parents brought the last of the food. Then they took seats further down the table instead of sitting right next to you and Lizzie. Only Cove was left out. He had stood up from his spot on the floor, but he hadn't made a move towards the kitchen. Cove, you can sit too. Slowly, he eyed the four seats that were left. Thanks to the new seating arrangement your parents chose, one free chair was beside you, another next to Lizzie, and the last two were on the other side of where your moms were sitting. Um... I'd probably demand he sit next to me. Sit next to me? Um... Cove's gaze met your brown eyes. Hee <laughs> hee. You smiled. Briefly, he grinned back. He walked over, pulled out the chair next to yours, and sat down. You were glad he wanted to sit with you. He just needed to know it was okay. Now that everyone was situated, Mommy began to pass out plates. Okay. Dig in, kids. I cooked a little bit of everything for dinner tonight. Be sure not to avoid all of the veggies. Ugh. Yes, Mom. Each person at the table served themselves. Except for one. Cove hesitated again. He fidgeted with his hands clamped on the top of his knees. He didn't seem very comfortable doing stuff in someone else's house. One dish seemed to have his eye, at least. That's pineapple chicken. Wanna try some? Mm. N not really. Sorry. By then, your moms had noted that Cove still had nothing on his plate as well. Do you not like any of the food, honey? Well... Maybe he hasn't tried Hawaiian food before. He hasn't? Wow! Please don't talk with your mouth full, Lizzie. Lizzie swallowed the bite she was eating, then she spoke again. He should try it now. She turned to Cove dramatically. Unless you want to shrink. That's what happens if you miss a meal. Elizabeth, that's not true. You know that. Cove squirmed under all the attention. He fidgeted with a fork between his fingers. I've had... some things. Just not any of this. Oh, shoot. I knew I should have asked your dad what your favorite foods were. It's alright, Lonnie. Maybe he'll find a new favorite today. You weren't so sure about that. Cove didn't look like he was going to be trying the food anytime soon. Um... I think you would like the pineapple chicken. It's yummy. Mm. He ultimately trusted your judgment. At your suggestion, Cove carefully spooned rice and chicken onto the plate. You saw that he took more of the grilled pineapple than any of the vegetables. You nodded, pleased, and your moms let it slide. At first, Cove poked at the food. Clearly, he was apprehensive to eat, and eat something new, but he took a few exploratory bites. Right? It's good, huh? Isn't it? You don't have to keep asking. He still speared more meat with his fork and ate it, chewing thoughtfully. It's not bad. 
Mommy grinned at his words, satisfied even though it wasn't exactly a glowing commendation. Lizzie wasn't as mollified. Hmm. You're so weird. Don't be mean to your friend. We're not friends. Damn! <laughs> Cove is just destroying Lizzie this episode. Oh. Mommy floundered in the face of Cove's blunt honesty. You weren't surprised by Cove's declaration. The more you got to know him, the more you realized he wasn't the type of kid to keep his opinions to himself. In the end, you suppose that if the two of them didn't want to be friends, you couldn't force them to be. Mm. Trying to think, how secure was I as a kid with my friends? I think as a kid, I always just assumed like my friends cared about me as much as I cared about them. So I'd be like, we're, we're definitely, we're like close-knit buddies. You knew that without a doubt. The way he felt about Lizzie didn't change it. When you gave Cove a look, he returned a small smile, confirming your thoughts. Yay. Your mommy looked at mom and only got a shrug. No. Elizabeth, don't call someone weird. There's no such thing as a weird person and a non-weird person. There's just different perspectives. It's... Not a nice thing to say to someone. Anyone. But Pam... Mommy tried to whisper exclusively to Mom. Her attempt to make it audible over the sounds of clanking silverware meant you caught the quiet words anyway. They're not friends. He said so. As parents, we can only try, and sometimes we fail. Not all kids will be thick as thieves. Now, less talking and more eating, kids. You need to clean up and start winding down for bed soon. But... Mom! No buts. We've talked about this. Your bedtime will be moved back in a few years. For now, you don't get to stay up late. Lizzie sulked, muttering under her breath about how it wasn't right. I hated going to bed early. <laughs> I've always been a night owl from the moment I was born, basically. <laughs> I always hated going to bed. It seemed way too early to go to sleep. Isn't that great? The sooner you sleep, the sooner a brand new day will be here. I think that's pretty exciting. You weren't sure you agreed. The rest of dinner passed by uneventfully. Cove was silent for most of it, even when you nudged him and tried to get him to talk. All too soon, the table was cleared, the games in the living room were put away, and you were all steered to your bedrooms. Mom finished tucking you in and kissed your brow just as Mommy poked her head in the room. All ready for lights off, you two? You were lying comfortably in your bed, the blanket hiked up under your armpits. You could kick it off later if it got too hot. Mom had set up the sleeping bag on the floor for Cove, just beside your bed. He had already wiggled inside. Mm-hmm. We are. Good night. Perfect. I'll go say good night to Lizzie, then. Mom tweaked your nose, chuckled when you squawked in annoyance, and left. Mommy took her place, sitting on the edge of your bed. Sweet dreams. Sweetie. She pressed a soft kiss on your forehead. You giggled as strands of her hair fell forward and tickled you. Mommy smiled down affectionate, affectionately at you, then moved her attention to Cove, who watched from his spot on the floor. Do you need anything before falling asleep, honey? What does your dad do? Um, sometimes... Sometimes he picks me up and lifts me really high, and he shakes his hands like he's gonna let go. But he catches me again. <laughs> he keeps doing that until sometimes he does drop me on my bed. Or other times he lowers me down and we pretend like I'm crashing. Cove had become pretty excited when talking about the nightly ritual he and his dad shared. He seemed to realize how animated he was and bashfully quieted. But I don't want to do that here. Oh, How fun! Though, I think you're right that it might not be a good idea to do that tonight. The sleeping bag might not be a soft enough landing. Mm. If there's anything else, you can always ask me or Molly's other mom. But I'm the nicer one. Just don't tell her that. <laughs> she laughed good-naturedly and stood up. Take care. 
Sleep well, Cove. Night. Leaning against the door jam, she rested a hand on the light switch and looked to you. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite! Ooh, what a view from the window. So pretty. With a last smile, Mommy turned off the lights and stepped out, closing the bedroom door behind her. You listened to her footstep footsteps fade as she walked down the hallway. But even as the sound vanished, your eyes stayed open. It was so exciting to have Cove spending the night. Hey, Cove. You're my friend. Oh, thanks. You're my friend, too. You started when Cove sighed deeply. You turned your head to look in his direction. In the dark, you could only see a faint outline of a lump under the covers. Cove? <laughs> could you be less loud? What's wrong? I can't sleep. Why not? He shifted, or at least you thought he did. You couldn't see anything, since your eyes were still adjusting to the dark. But you heard his sleeping bag rustle. I want to be in my bed. Oh. Cove sat up. Your eyes had gotten used to the low light level, so you could see him better. He got out of the sleeping bag, wobbled towards your side table, and pulled open the top drawer. What is it? I'm getting my glasses. You sat up too, watching as he reached inside. He paused for a second, then pulled his hand out. Instead of his glasses, though, he was holding a book. Cove turned it around in his hands, trying to figure out the proper orientation for it. You knew, even without reading the title, which one it was. That was one your moms would read to you. It was special. Hmm. A special book. I don't think I'd freak out like that. Hmm. Either the second or the third one. Um, I'll do heads for two, tails for three. Hiya! Heads. Okay. I'm okay with this. Um, sorry, let me actually say the line first. I thought you were looking for your glasses. I was. Then I felt this. It looks cool. The compliment he afforded your special book had you grinning, your confusion forgotten. It is really cool. Oh? Yeah? What's it about? It's a story about a squire who wants to become a knight and there's magic. Does it have mermaids? No, but... Squire's brave and funny. It has cool pictures. Mommy reads it for me. With different voices for every character. Nice. There's a dragon in it. Hmm. Either two or four. Let's go pictures. I did love my books with pictures. It has cool pictures. Some of them even take up the whole page. There's this one where the squire and a dragon meet. They're fighting, so the poses are awesome, and the dragon's breathing fire! Cove looked excited by your words. He flipped the book over and focused at the backside summary. He must be pretty interested in it. You were reminded of the hours you'd spent hearing the tales. No matter how many times you read it, or had it read to you, you were still entertained by the story and pictures inside. You glanced out the window. The moon was high in the sky. It was definitely the time when you were supposed to be asleep. You couldn't keep staying up. Sure, what am I, a nerd? An unfun nerd? No, I want to read the book with Cove. You climbed out of bed and padded over to your side table. You opened it and rummaged around, pushing aside stuffed toys and crayons. Cove called out to you in a confused whisper. Um, what are you doing? You didn't respond, letting the suspense build instead. You let out a quiet cry of victory when you found what you were looking for. You jumped back onto the bed before any hidden boogeyman could catch you unaware. Oh! Cove continued to watch as you wiggled your way beneath the blanket you discarded earlier. You pulled it up over your head. What's... Shh! 
Get under here already. Break the book, too. <gasps> Amazing. Yay! Let's read. Let's hide under the covers of darkness and read this book. After a minute, the bed dipped as Cove got on it. Then the blanket shifted. You fiddled with the flashlight in your grip, feeling for the switch. Whoa! With a click, the small space flooded with a bright light. Cove sputtered, putting a hand up to shield himself from the beam. Uh, move it somewhere else! Oops! He tilted the flashlight so that it shone directly on his face, giggling. Hey! He shifted again, making it shine down. You adopted an innocent expression when Cove scowled at you. Now we can read, and my moms won't know. I, I, I did. <laughs> I'll admit. I do this all the time. I always pretend to sleep when mom or mommy check on me, and I've never been caught. It's fun. Yep, can confirm. Do you want to try? Cove nodded. Pleased by his straightforward response, he placed the book between you and flipped it open to the first page. Meanwhile, he lay down on his belly and shuffled closer, picking up the flashlight to shine it on the pages. His face was illuminated with a warm glow. You mirrored his position, leaning in so you could see the book better. Your foreheads nearly brushed until you shuffled back a comfortable distance. Mm. I mean, I would want it to be narrated. You loved it when Mommy read to you. Why not read as loud as you dared this time of night? You didn't even need to study the page for long. There was once a squire. He dreamed of knighthood. All they wanted was to do good. Cove was taken aback when you began to recite the words by heart. You even pronounced knighthood properly, a word which had given you grief in the past. His reaction encouraged you to keep going. Soon, you got to an exciting part. The squire and the dragon's first meeting. The squire walked up to the fearsome dragon, their borrowed sword in one hand and a torch in the other. Her red scales danced in the light like flickering flames. Could you say the dragon's lines? Do you need to get your glasses? No. It's... My head hurts if I don't wear my glasses for a while. I can kind of see things all right. But I don't know any voices. That's okay. It's fun anyway. Hmm. Um, let me just... Cove read the page, his mouth moving silently with the words. Eventually, he nodded to himself and spoke them out loud. Who... Who goes there? roared the dragon. Who dares enter my cave? It was your turn. You went into the squire's famous speech. The next time you looked up from the page, your gaze landed right on Cove. His eyes were following the text, a soft smile lighting up his features. A lock of his hair fell into his field of vision, but he gave it no notice. He was lost in the story. You started when Cove caught you watching him. He raised a questioning eyebrow. What? Nothing. Cove shot you a strange look, but he went back to the book. You did too, even as your eyelids started to droop. When your eyes opened again, your bedroom was pitch black and silent. Your head was smushed in your pillow. <laughs> your pajamas were sticking to you, and your mouth was dry. Slowly, you raised yourself onto your elbows. You yawned, the back of your throat twinging as you did so. You rolled onto your side to sit up in bed, planning on getting water from the kitchen, when you saw a dark shape towering above you. You froze. Then you remembered you weren't alone in your room tonight. Cove? That you? Yeah. Are you, have you still been awake this entire time? You shifted and felt something cylindrical press against your thigh. You fumbled for it. The familiar weight of the flashlight pressed into your palm. You turned it on. Cove blinked at you, looking exhausted. He was in his normal clothes again, shoes and everything. His pajama pants were left on the floor, abandoned. His sleeping bag was in a similar state. What is it? Can't sleep. I keep waking up. Did you have a bad dream? He shook his head from side to side. No, I just can't sleep. It's weird here. 
I totally get it. It's so hard to sleep in a stranger's house. Not in your bed. You frowned. You told your mom's redecorated only a few months back. I like my room. It's not that it's bad. I just always sleep in my bed. In my room. That made things a little clearer. It wasn't anything that you'd done. Cove couldn't sleep in a new place. You wondered how long it took for Cove's bedroom in his new house to not be weird to him. Probably a while. I'm gonna go. What? That shook off the last of your doziness. He was going to walk outside back to his own house? This time of night? All by himself? He noted your shocked expression and looked at you with resolve. My dad will let me in. And I've gone outside late before. And I... have to go. I wouldn't want him to leave. You don't have to. It wouldn't even be a sleepover if Cove left in the middle of the night. It was called a sleepover for a reason. Cove looked frustrated, though you got the feeling it wasn't at you specifically. Yes, I do. You were at a stalemate. Frowning to yourself, you studied his sleeping bag. Was there a way you could make him more comfortable? If Cove didn't like how weird your room was, maybe he would feel better if he had something more familiar nearby. Oh! You went to your bed and grabbed your blanket. Then you spread it over the floor beside Cove's sleeping bag. He watched as you did, blinking. You're... sleeping on the floor? Yeah, next to you. If that doesn't help, I'm out of ideas. Hmm. Is that okay? Uh-huh. Yep, I would... I probably would have offered him to, like, just sleep in my bed <laughs> at that age. But this is, like, the second thing I would try. Honestly. You spied a small smile playing on his lips. We can try it. But... If it doesn't work, I want to go home still. Deal. You grabbed your pillow, and a few plush toys for good measure. As Cove picked up his pajama bottoms and folded them, then set them aside. You tossed the items in your hand onto the blanket, completing your task. The two of you stood and looked down at your handiwork. Are you going to change into your pajamas? No, I can sleep in this. There wasn't anything else left to say. In unison, you both lay down side by side. Cove put his glasses aside and got into his sleeping bag. You made yourself as comfortable as you could, wrapped in the fuzzy blanket. The floor was hard and unforgiving against your back, not at all as comfy as your bed, but you didn't mind it much. You had fallen asleep on the floor before. What mattered was if it helped. You swiveled your head to observe him. Is it better? He poked the top of his face out of the sleeping bag and mumbled bashfully. I don't know. I have to sleep first. I can't tell if I can now. That wasn't a satisfactory enough answer for you. Wake me up if this doesn't work. You can go after, okay? Cove looked confused by the request, but he nodded anyway. Okay. I will. You smiled. At least he wouldn't disappear without you knowing. You settled in for bed on the ground, closing your eyes and waiting for sleep to come. You wanted to give Cove a chance to get comfortable. Surprisingly, he decided to keep talking. This was my first sleepover is i guess oh my goodness man you're doing very well for your first sleepover actually you opened your eyes to see him staring up at the ceiling his seafoam hair spread out around his head like he'd just gotten shocked really i've had sleepovers before sometimes i'll go to friends houses shiloh slept over a few times too and other stuff cove remained quiet the silence stretched between you but it didn't feel awkward right now you didn't feel the need to break it immediately. How was it? Or is it? Hmm. It's not bad. I liked reading your book. You did? I kind of thought you weren't having fun. You didn't really say anything when we were eating. I didn't know what to say. Oh. Now you were the one who didn't know what to say. 
You just laid there, and so did Cove for what felt like a long time. Hey, Cove? There was no answer. You leaned on your elbow to see Cove's eyes closed, his lashes fanned over the apples of his cheeks. His chest raised and lowered with every inhale and exhale. He was fast asleep. You smiled to yourself. Good night. You rested on your back and closed your eyes. Soon enough, you were lulled to sleep by the gentle sound of Cove's breathing. Did we do it? Did we manage it? <gasps> the next morning, you were woken by the sound of Mom's voice and a soft shake on your shoulder. Molly? Wake up, it's time to get up and at him. The sun was peeking through your curtains and you rubbed at your eyes as they adjusted to the new light. How are you? Is everything okay down there? You blinked at Mom for a moment, confused, before remembering you had slept down on the floor next to Cove. Yay! It worked! I'm so happy! He was just waking up, yawning loudly. His hand lightly hit your face as he stretched out. Hey! When you moved away, you groaned a little at the pain in your shoulder from having slept on the hard ground. It definitely wasn't as comfortable as your cozy bed, that's for sure. Cove wasn't feeling good, so I stayed with him. You mumbled and glanced at Cove, who rubbed at his eyes sleepily. He didn't say anything. Still, you were glad he had decided to stay the night in the end. When you looked at Mom next, she was smiling at you both. Mommy was standing in the doorway behind her, doing the same thing. All right, kids. We'll be downstairs making breakfast. Don't take too long coming down. She said something to Mommy on her way out that made the two of them giggle. What, what are you... What comments are you making? Mom! Mommy, what are you saying over there? Hmm? I want to know. Did you sleep okay? You stood up and stretched your legs, watching Ko fumble with the bedside drawer and pull out, pull out his glasses. Um, I think so. He had been able to relax when it was just the two of you in the night. Now that a new day had come, he gave the impression of feeling out of place again. But the smile on his face had a gentle light. Thanks, Molly. You're welcome. Even if it couldn't be a perfect time, it was worth it. Cove didn't stay for breakfast. He really was ready to go at that point. <laughs> Mommy called to make sure Mr. Holden was up before Cove went home. He gave you a small wave as he left, thanking your mom for letting him stay before he disappeared through the front door. You smiled at the sight. Cove's very first sleepover had come to an end. Yay! And it was a success! For the most part. Don't know if he liked the pineapple chicken, but... <laughs> At the very least, we got him to stay the night. And we had a cute new CG with him, too. Adorable. I am curious. Do Cove and Lizzie, like, never get along as friends as kids? Or, depending on your choices, could they be friendlier to each other? I'm super curious about that. Don't know if that's a thing. But I'm uh, more than okay with him being my friend, at least. <laughs> We're still killing it together, which is great. Okay. Thanks, guys, for joining me. Next time, we'll see what, the, uh, what moments we're going to enjoy together.